right, here we are, ending our two week stay at Lake Tahoe Valley Campground. This has been an amazing stay. June got spayed and we're off to find a little slice of dispersed camping heaven before we head out of the area. Louie and June are ready to go. We did a little pack up last night, so the inside is pretty good. A lot of times our desk just has our laptops and a little bit of equipment out. And, oh, hi June. How you doing, girl? And I need to head out because I always have the water and sewer hose last. Hi June, June. This was our tight sight in the trees. At first we're like, oh, we're not gonna like it, but we actually kind of liked it because it gave us a little bit of seclusion. And here's what I have left for pack up. Sewer hose, water hose, power rail. I tried to do a little bit more organization, picked up a couple totes to kind of help. I got the Moride hose, or that's actually a, the cord reel. Well, you could use it as a hose reel too, but I temporarily put that there to see how I like it. E-bikes are back up on the slide and we're gonna see how well this does for organization. I now use this zero G for our black tank flush, but this used to be our hose in the Sprinter van. We bought this in 2019. This thing has been going very strong, but I do have to say since this one, we've had three or four that have had crimp issues and they all leak. I just had to replace this 50 footer again. They just leak right out of the crimp on that end after a while. So I love the hoses, but I'm not sure why they're having crimp issues on these. But this one here has lasted almost five years. Pretty amazing. And I've been now storing these in the back of the truck. We also recently changed our filters on these clear source. Uh, if you remember, they sent this out to us back in January of last year or so. It's about six months and the filters were absolutely dirty. I still have some leftover hose filters, so I've been using those up. So that's for filtration. And then on the inside, we're still using the Berkey. So if the water ain't good, I don't know what we're doing wrong. And I haven't really thought about more on mounting this somewhere. I'm just still figuring out my space. So for now, I don't have a problem hooking it up and unhooking it up and we just store it inside here on travel day. And then I just let it empty out the water out of here just so nothing leaks. And I'm sure you guys have all seen these by now, these extra uh, gate valves, which basically just uh, pops on to the end of your waste gate and it just gives you one more level of protection so you don't get that little bit of dribblage that comes out of the pipe and here to where the cap normally is. So it's just one more extra gate valve. Super inexpensive, easy to put in, and uh, well worth it. We've been using these for years now as well. This one's actually a couple years old. These zero G hoses are just too convenient. So this is gonna be maybe officially our shortest drive day. It's 22 minutes, 17 miles, Monday morning. 
9.43, we're gonna be there about 10 o'clock and we are looking forward to finding a nice little boondocking spot there at Hope Valley Dispersed Camping. I am very excited. It was an excellent stay. We had a great time here and it's at that point where it's like, yeah, as much as I loved it here, it feels like it's time to go. Also, on a negative note, this was probably the worst campground as far as off-leash dogs. I mean, I'm not talking one or two, probably like 10. Multiple, multiple times we're walking around the campground and an off-leash dog would bark and lunge at our dogs. It was just absolutely unbelievable. And a lot of repeat offenders, like they'd come by, mm -hmm. like specifically people that I could call out right now, even happening in this morning, so I had to like pick up the dogs. You know, our dogs aren't aggressive, but you never know how dogs will respond. It's just very unusual behavior. It's very like, rude. You'll run into one or two every once in a while in a campground, uh, but to be like, a, a I don't want to say the majority of people had their dogs off leash, but this many was absolutely crazy. And the owners were... Oh, she's puking. I caught it. Gross. Caught it with my bare hands. That is disgusting. Well, it's, at least it's not on her blankie. Yeah. I'm gonna need a few of those. Yeah, unfortunately, every once in a while the dogs uh, get a little nervous on travel day, um, but she also, she's got this little habit now where she's uh, foraging, digging, like eating little things of whatever she finds in the She'll campground. She'll eat whatever she can eat, and like she's the kind of eater where even while she's going potty, number one or number two, she'll be eating while going to the bathroom, so it's like hard, you know, to like yank her from what she's eating while she's going to the bathroom and... So uh, anyways, to wrap up the leashless, leashless dog walkers, uh, it was just for whatever reason, this area, people don't feel like they need to have their dogs on leash. And um, I, I don't know the reasoning behind it. I guess leave some comments below if you're one of those people that, you know, doesn't want to have their dog on a leash in a campground. I understand you may have the best, most nicest, well-trained, smartest dog in the entire world but how do you control the other dog that is on the leash or off the leash or i mean there's hundreds of people dozens of dogs in a small area i just don't understand how it could even be uh per per perceived as a, a good idea so our good friend cass she has a really really amazing german shepherd and spending time with her off leash dogs really stressed her out because her dog doesn't like being charged by dogs, right? So even if your dog is good, you don't know how other dogs are gonna respond to being charged, which puts everybody at risk. And the second thing that I really don't like about off-leash animals is that's where opportunities happen where dog poop doesn't get picked up simply because you didn't see it happen. Like if your dog is away from you, even if it's just a few feet, and it takes a little duker, and you miss it like you didn't try to do that but that's what gets dogs kicked out of places and that's what ruins it for responsible dog people yeah so there is a, uh, a leash law a leash rule i should say of the campgrounds the privately owned campgrounds so they get to make their own rules and policies and uh you know people just decide not to listen to it and they decide not to enforce it so our rant is over on to hope valley we have not been this way down 50 and we're excited to be 20 minutes away. You ran for 10 minutes and, and the trip's almost we're over. We're almost there. I was only 17. I took a can of gasoline and poured it out in between. All this pain and suffering. portrait of you and me I saw the world through tunnel vision utopian disposition tight fit in here got some cones 
All right, so that was another ag checkpoint. We talked about that a couple of videos ago. Uh, this is a first for us. We've never gotten um, a certification slip. So this was a smaller one in, in uh, Myers, Lake. California. And this is an interesting one because you cross the border into California from Nevada into Lake Tahoe and there's no inspection point until uh, like 20 minutes down the road here on 50. So they actually gave us a pass, so next time we go through a station, we can hand this over and uh, and they didn't really inspect us. They just, again, asked us some questions. And uh, for the first time, they talked about a, a gypsy moth out of Minnesota. Yeah, he asked what county we're from in Minnesota, and I told him, and then he said that that county does not have the gypsy moth, but a neighboring county does. He asked me if I've ever heard of that county, and I, embarrassed, I hadn't. I said no. I've heard of it, but I don't know where Cook County is. Yeah. I'm sure once I heard, like, the cities that it has in there that I'd be like, oh yeah, Cook County. So anyway, it's cool to get this pass. He says next time we go through an inspection, because what did he say? There's 19 inspection places? 16. So the next time we pass through it, we just wave this little ticket, and they won't ask us any questions, because we've already been questioned by two stations now. You came home to a road rafter But this is an absolutely beautiful area down here. Um, just, just amazing. The aspens are kind of popping out a little bit and this is just beautiful. I'm really enjoying it and I'm realizing how much I really love Northern California. We've spent so much time, so many months in Southern California. And it's nice to really get to explore the northern part of the state. Okay, so we may have to scope out this turn, so don't, um, you know, get too crazy and gun hole it. We just got to make sure that it's acceptable for the big fifth wheel. You know, boondocking in a larger RV definitely has some challenges, and you just kind of got to be a little bit more careful, plan a little bit more, have backups, and just be a little bit more diligent. I see some RVs off in the distance. Big rigs. I see a couple RVs back there, a couple tent campers. like a decent entrance. Gotta line it up. Get in that tight little cattle guard. Sweet home. A little bit of highway noise during the day, but at least it's still pretty private. Uh, beautiful views of the mountains, pine trees, and again, we're kind of sitting in the front of the classroom, but it's not bad. I love it. It's it is growing on me. They I always have, do. I have a really see, like I always like bond to a spot much quicker than Aaron does. I feel like immediate bond here. Yeah, well, it's, it's kind of how you nestle in and how you tuck yourself in. And so we have back windows for our office and we have these big side windows. So, so we want this view to be beautiful. And that's the north. So if we need to bust out Starlink, no trees. And then we got all that solar. So you can finish doing laundry. We can. I, th I think we're going to want to stay longer than just a couple days. Yeah, but maybe, we, you know, that's the thing about having plans is you can change them or you can stick to them. It's like an insurance policy. Well, maybe we want to go. We're excited. We have a we have a fun couple months ahead, and it just is like everywhere we go has just been killer. And this feels really great. I'm excited to get set up, and the dogs are gonna love it too. Yes. Safety rail. The only bummer is all the down here, which. 
always talked about how June likes to eat poop, so. Now, who has a rake? Oh, you're gonna use your poop rake? <laughs> I don't wanna call it a poop rake, but if that's what it, it might become a poop rake. If that's what it's gonna be. Rocks. I know. I worry about these. I worry about these little rocks making their way underneath the slide and causing damage. Because it could definitely happen. I do that every time. The door needs to be open all the way, like all the way. It doesn't help that you try to do it one-handed. Yeah, I'm always filming this too, but... It's nice they have the assist, so you can do it one-handed, but you gotta pay attention to what you're doing. Yeah. Nice. I'm gonna bump out this first slide a little bit. Whoop. That's the wrong one. I want this one. Just so I can pop in the back, make sure nothing's in the way. An awesome sunset. That's kind of the catch 22 of the opposing slides. Travel days, it's hard to get back here without popping it out. We can still access the stove and the refrigerator, but coming back here is, is hard to do. But when you get to a campsite, you pop both slides out and that's what allows you to have this big walk around kitchen island so this is our little pine tree view pine trees pine trees not bad while Aaron gets the slides out and the leveling jacks and all that done I take the dogs on a little walkie walk and get them some fresh air, move their legs. And then I bring them inside when it's nice and open in here. Poor guys had a half an hour travel day today. It's a rough day. Um, and then we get in here, I get them some food and some water right away. That's the very next thing that I do. It's all about the dogs. So I wanted to share with our Berkey situation. You know, we've been a fan of the Berkey since 2020. Yeah, 2020 we've had this bad boy and we've used it in the van, in the truck, in the trailer, and now here. And we said we were going to get rid of it after the triple source filter, ultra source, and we haven't done it. We've been struggling with it lately with the filters, trying to flush them and clean them. We've had the filters for like two years and it was taking hours to drain, like even overnight drainage wouldn't filter. So we figured it was time for some new filters and Aaron found some generic filters because Berkey filters for this travel filter are like $200 and that's crazy. And this one, you spent what, 50? 50 bucks. So it's really nice to have fast filtering water the way it should be get them some water and then I clean wipe all the counters top down vacuum last get our dumbbells set up this little station over here still works really well none of the shoes move around we put dumbbells here when we travel those stay my cutting board works really well we arrive and everything is where it should be and then our TV I don't know if we shared that we do travel with our air fryer here now instead of moving it to the floor and we use the tv strap so it straps in and then we also put the handle towards the tv inside just in case that uh, air fryer were to pop open it's not popping open over here it's like stuck shut over there so everybody's feeling good you feeling good and I don't know if we mentioned yet or not, but we're actually meeting our partners, longtime partners and friends, Battleborn Batteries, out here to say hi because we're literally an hour or two from Reno, Nevada. Yeah. Sparks, Nevada, where they're from. And we've never been up in this area to visit, so we thought it would be fun to arrange a visit. And they're going to come out here and they're going to check out our new pad.
fresh clean rug for Louis to sleep on. They look really good. Coming together in here. Last thing I do is my plants, which I use my storage up here. I really love all of the extra storage in here. I use this little container for all my house plants. This is Aaron's very first house plant. He named it Seymour. That goes in your corner. One thing I just got is my new rock salt lamp. This goes on my desk in my little corner. I love the red glow that it gives off. I find it very calming. Stick that over here. What else do we have in here? Just lots of plants. Most of them fake, but a couple of them real. Aaron saw this empty container up here one day and he tried to turn it into a storage bin for things because he didn't realize that I use this for travel day. So it's really great to have enough storage where you can have dedicated travel day bins and you don't have to scramble to find a spot to stick things because that's the worst. Space wise, it's definitely worked out for us. We are not over crammed and we're not like under utilizing like our space. I think we're right we're right pretty close to our sweet spot. Yeah, I feel I feel the same way. This one goes up here. Okay, and then some more travel stuff that I do. I don't think I've shared this. This is a pretty empty cabinet as well. And I like to put my little produce bins in there. And then when I land, I set them out because I'm a big believer in if you have things out and in your eyesight, you're going to use them more. So that includes healthy foods, that includes our dumbbells. These dumbbells never bother me that they're sitting out. In fact, they make me want to work out right now. Gotta have it right in the right area. We also put our little microwave dish up here. Some people in the Alliance have said that these big residential microwaves can sometimes cause these plates to like bounce during travel. So I don't know if this is necessary or if it's overkill, but we definitely put it in the cabinet for travel. Yeah, so what else do I have in here? I have some figs and some kiwis. And tomatoes and some basil like it's like my big produce shelf so this is just like reminds me to eat it the other thing i put our berkey when we travel down here underneath the sink so i will stack these trash bins together and i put them in the rear right there and then we have this open spot here where i put the stacked berkey and everything has its place i think we're figuring everything out feeling really good and that's about it. I'm gonna go turn on my computer and get some work done. So we got settled in for a minute and although the dogs look comfy, we're gonna take them on a little tiny walk and just kinda explore the land a little bit. This is not a very big area walk around a little bit and see what's going on out there. I will there. say it's very exciting to be in a new atmosphere after being parked for, for two full weeks. Yeah, that was a long time in Lake Tahoe. And it's nice that she's like out of her restrictions. I don't even know if we talked about that, did we? Not not a ton. So June, June we went to Lake Tahoe, most specifically to, uh, to get June spayed and yeah. have two weeks of rest for her. So let's see, June, let's share, let's share. So June had a, she got spayed. You can see her incision is healing very nicely. And it's a long incision because she had a little hernia 
right there that they took care of while she was under. So she has an extra long incision and it's 14 days, no playing, no running, no rough housing with the Mr. Louie, no having fun at all. <laughs> it was tough. So she's been in like this little dress skirt to cover up her wound and prevent her from licking and she's been on sedatives so that's kind of tough to put your little puppy on sedatives but it makes sense like if you want her to heal up you just kind of have to do it and she gets sleepy and she takes a lot of naps and i feel like we bonded a lot during that time didn't we yeah we did we did and now we can go out and play so i've been letting them run and play in here which has been really fun she's off the meds she's back to normal and tell me honey will we go far Listen, baby, don't break my heart. Yeah, this road is long ahead. Yeah, this road is long ahead. Let's take it slow. La, la, la. Just like that, we get back from our walk and here comes some hail. We had no idea this was in the forecast. We're kind of glad we're not really far down the dirt road because it's raining hard and it's been raining for a good hour. So when it's like this, uh, you know, we're glad we got four hard walls and a roof. And a fireplace and a TV. Chris wants to turn the fireplace on and watch a movie. Mm. I do. And I do like the Creed movies. Is that an advertisement for Propel? Yeah. Huh. Whoa, look at that sun pop up. We were just getting 2,500 watts of solar. Whoa. Yeah. Trucky sourdough. I don't know when we're gonna bust into this bad boy, but I'm glad we have it. Mm -hmm. It's nice and soft. It smells like roasted garlic. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Can you smell that? Mm -hmm. 